What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Forge. I'm Vulcan and today we are taking a look at a vastly, hugely requested build and that is the Storm Mage. Lightning, hail, fire, mostly lightning, mostly the lightning side of the build. But this is something that a lot of people have been commenting and talking about, that it's just a phenomenal build, it's just something fun to play, it has great AoE damage, and I gotta say guys, you're correct. It is a super fun just build to use, and I've been having a blast with it. Sorry it's taken me a little bit longer to get it, I've been trying to collect a good set of gear, um, you know, I didn't have any magic gear because I've been doing a lot of physical uh, DPS classes and tanking classes and things like that. But now that I'm starting to acquire some magic stuff, get ready to see a lot more mage-oriented builds. So exciting times. But what let's do is let's go ahead and let's break down what makes up a storm mage. So the first things first, let's go ahead and let's talk about our actual abilities. And our abilities are Thunderbolt, Lightning Strike, Spellbinder, which is the kind of inherent ability, the skill you gain from choosing the Arcanist or a Mage Path. Killer Instinct, which comes from the Assassination Tree. Holy Dive, which is an ability you pick up after level 20. You buy it from Nihilius in uh, Amarath and Frost Nova. And our right click is Trimmer. Uh, the reason I went with Trimmer is just it's a nice little stun. Um, gets you out of areas. I don't use it too, too often, but nevertheless. Okay, so your actual abilities, guys. Here's what I am looking at. For my lightning strike, I have deal damage faster, uh, jumps to one extra enemy, and I do have a static or a lightning explosion called the static burst, but I will jump between this and my uh, additional jump one extra time to another enemy. It really just kind of depends. My thunderbolt, I go for obviously cost reduced, and then flashing light. I need a higher damage at a higher rate, hitting enemies more often much more than moving faster. I don't care how fast it moves because I need more damage, not more speed. And the other ones don't really matter as much. So, like I said, I went for all lightning, so I just have those two lightning abilities of my frost ability. The other ones all serve different purposes. So for Spellbinder, like I said, this is coming from your Arcanist tree, which we'll get to momentarily. But in passive mode, it increases your Umbra regeneration and your resistance against spells. When you use it, you actually get a spell damage boost, so it is a DPS cooldown, and the cooldown on is 15 seconds, so it's actually pretty nice. Holy Dive, this is a gap closer, or a get out of jail free card. Um, I'll show you guys that momentarily. And then Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct will put a mark on a target, giving them frailty. Frailty essentially is a fancy word of saying they're gonna take more damage for a certain period of time and uh, there's some pretty interesting things that went on in the spec that will make this pretty powerful. So, let's look at the gear real quick. Now, the gear itself, I know guys, it's not anything to look at, and may keep this in mind, I had zero mage gear, so I'm going through and trying to build this thing from scratch at level 20. And by the way, the vendors aren't selling anything that's helping me out, so pretty disappointed in that, but <laughs> that's a topic for another day. So I just have your basic light armor. Um, the you know the cream of the crop here uh, in the entire set is going to be my dust staff of lightning, 26 to 79. It's got two uh, gem slots that I really just slotted. I need to go through and kind of true those up a little bit. Plus 14% spell damage and my mage hood, which gives me uh, some umber generation, willpower. It's only level 16, but it still hangs with the best of them. And really the plus 55% chance to gain 43 umber points on kills is where I'm taking that and kind of keeping that thing around. We did get a legendary earlier, an iron shield. Um, this is something I'm gonna be using in the next video. So gear up there. All right, so after we saw the gear, we saw the skills. Let's jump into this real quick. I'm rocking 390 willpower, excellent, obviously. Agility, don't care about it. Toughness, enough to get me over 900. And ferocity is 93, so happy trails there. Uh, my Umbra generation is 177. My Rage Conservation is 4. My Rage Generation is 103. Not that that technically matters. My damage modifiers are 74.6% on spells. I have an attack speed buff of 10% on spells. And my critical damage is 100%, and my critical chance is only 8.3. So, a little weak in that category. 
But let's go ahead and let's jump into the spec itself. So, here it is. Uh, we jumped in, we're on the Arcanist tree, and as you can see, I'm like Spellbinder there. I'm not going to go through each and every node, I'm just going to kind of go through, you know, the big ones and the ones we definitely need to uh, call out, per se. So, I just went through, avoided all the passive ones, um, didn't feel like I needed to jump in there. This is a big thing, volatile nature, right? You get plus 8% physical resistance when your Umbra is empty. You get a nice plus 8% spell damage when your Umbra is full. Now keep in mind, that's full. Full means 100%, so that's on your first spell. So you're gonna plus 8% on your first spell, after that it's gonna disappear. Um, same thing on the opposite end of the spectrum when it's empty, plus a nice three willpower. Then we also have plus six to spell damage if your Umbra is full. So that's gonna be plus 6% plus another obviously 8%, so that's 14% right there. And then plus 20% Umbra regeneration if your Umbra is empty. So uh, your Umbra is gonna regenerate fairly quickly. Now, cause keep in mind guys, there are no rage spells in the game right now. So if your rage is full and your Umbra is empty, there's no way for you to dump rage outside of using a melee ability and equipping a melee weapon. So this is a storm mage guys. This is lightning, this is the thunder. So obviously we went up the lightning side of the field first, and we just kind of hooked all the way around. Um, I didn't care too much for the frost or the fire, just because, I mean, <laughs> we're a storm mage, guys. So jumping through here, uh, static discharge, um, you're gonna actually cast a small lightning nova when killing enemies with lightning damage, that's on top of all the other AOE stuff that we've been doing. Then we have Umbra reshaping, essentially different types of damage you're putting out are gonna be converted to lightning, to shadow, to, or sorry, to frost, to fire. And essentially that takes the, what I'll call special damage, Umbra, Sacred, Shadow, and turns it to elemental damage. So happy trails. Plus four to all elemental damage and plus 10% to the duration of your burning, freezing, and shocking effects. Plus 25% to all elemental damage. Okay, now this one is key, guys. This is a good, a good ability. This is something you need to keep in mind. Elemental Storm. This will create a storm area each time you hit the same area with elemental attacks and it'll help you propagate elemental effects when hitting enemies inside a storm area, AKA increasing your AOE damage. Now, these attached little nodes here are supportive perks. What this is gonna do is it's gonna increase by 20% the duration of all your storm areas, which is good, we need that, because the next following things are pretty interesting. So, you get a plus 1% elemental damage stack for each storm stack when you're in a storm area, AKA, for each storm area that's out, you get a nice plus 2% elemental resistance for each storm that's out, and then you can benefit. So this one is important. You definitely wanna make sure you get Cataclysm because this allows you to absorb all the benefits. You still get the increased damage, you get the increased resistance, but you do not have to stand in a certain area. This allows you to free flow, to move, and still get the, the perks. So that's absolutely critical. And then this one is 10% chance to cast an Elemental Nova when picking up a globe, which takes me to this part down here. You wanna pick up all the globes you can. You're gonna get a spell pass, spell, spell casting buff. Ugh, sorry guys. You're gonna get a willpower buff. You're gonna get a reduce all spell cooldowns buff. And you're gonna get a, basically if you're close to death, you're gonna pick up a lot of globes. I went into the Assassin's Tree, um, nothing too crazy there. I jumped in, got the plus 10 crit chance to weapons and spells, and then I came up here and I got the Killer Instinct so I can do a little bit more damage. Okay guys, so that's the spec, that's the gear, that's the spells. Now we are in a random dungeon here, and let's take this puppy for a test drive. So as you can see, we're doing a little bit of damage here, alright? Blue names are going to take a little bit longer, but you got the Emperor Palpatine Tickle Fingers, aka Lightning Hands, that are going to do some severe damage. We got an Undead Butcher. As you can see, the little skull above him is the Mark of Frailty. He's taking increased damage, and he didn't stand a chance. Now, my Umbra was taking a pretty big of a hit right there, and that's something that I continuously see, is you can churn through this stuff fairly quickly. Um, you can churn through your Umbra very quickly, and that's not good, right? I mean, you need that stuff to be able to do damage, so you wanna make sure that um, you're trying to get as much Umbra regeneration as you possibly can. But just look at the nasty AoE on this thing, guys. I mean, it is <laughs> absurd. And you know, the thing is, the bigger the packs are, the more damage that gets done, 
and this the uh ooh legendary oh no damn I thought i thought i was saying the more damage it gets done so it's almost one of those things where you know you want more people or more enemies to be there you want more things to be surrounding you because when you pop your spell binder you're going to get a nice little umber regeneration buff when you pop your uh lightning hand you're going to do a decent amount of damage just like that and uh, bosses tend to fall over now the one thing i will say that i do have uh issues with there's that holy dive is see we're out of umbra so we'll just kind of like a waiting game is melee ability or melee characters that have a lot of health that close gaps such as like butchers and things like that those guys tend to be a little troublesome because they can close the gap they have a lot of health you can run out of umbra so you kind of have to do a you know burn and then go and then burn and then go and then burn and then go um i'm gonna grab this crossbow you know me guys i'm a big crossbow guy and this ring and the ring so you almost have to do, like I said, a burn and go, because if you don't, then you're going to end up just blowing all of your uh, mana or your umbra, and you're going to be in a sticky situation. So make sure to keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and let's jump through one more here, and let's take a look at uh, kind of some of the other abilities, right? The lightning hands is super nice, but let's see. So here's the lightning orbs. Here's kind of how they work. And if your enemies are going in a straight line, they'll do some serious damage. They also don't take a lot of Umbra. So if you look at my Umbra generation down here, me sitting there throwing these things out is taking relatively nothing. Your Lightning Hands takes quite a bit, so you need to make sure to sort of weave these a little bit, I would say. Um, yeah, look at that. That is just ridiculous. You need to sort of weave them a little bit, but for the most part, you know, feel free to go crazy, especially when you're level 20 and you have a semi-decent build. You're not really going to encounter too many obstacles um, that are gonna I guess take care of your character or uh, make you run out of mana really the biggest thing is at the end of the arena in Durham uh, or Dur sorry is where I was having my issues and I mean rightfully so it's a boss that has 68k health and he closes the gap he's a big melee character so I mean it is what it is Hell yeah, melted. All right, so to all those people out there that said, uh, you know, hey Vulcan, man, you gotta try this. This is a fantastic build. And I told you, you know, hey, I'm, I'm working on trying to gather gather some stuff so I can actually do it. Um, great job, you know, good good call out. I think, uh, I think it was a really, a really good play. And um, it's been an absolute blast so far. So let's see. Support, spell damage, nothing much there. All right, so we got a nice little ghoul here that has Umbral and Sacred Protection, so that's okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop this. And he's going to do his thing. I'm going to do mine. Looks like I came out on top this time around. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, guys. But yeah, so awesome call out, and this has been insanely fun. Now, um, one of the things that you can keep an eye on too, right, is you don't necessarily have to have a staff for this. Um, you know, the staff's abilities that I have, like so, are gonna do a decent amount of damage. But at the same time, if you switch to maybe like a two-handed greatsword, and you're kind of rolling a, let's like a battle mage style uh, thing, it'll be just fine. It's not gonna be um, that big of a deal. And I think you might actually get a really good synergy. And I think I'm gonna do that one next, to be honest. I want to have almost like a, a lightning like warrior, almost like a Thor, right? Because you're gonna be able to use those melees to burn that rage. And uh, you're gonna be able to use your lightning as a uh, kind of a ranged, I guess, engagement tool. But then at the same time, you're gonna be able to leverage your melee to really be able to um, destroy anybody that comes near you. So, all right guys, well this has been the Lightning Storm Mage video and uh, it's been a super fun build. I think it's, in my case, I think it's slightly behind the Archer build in my mind, but the Archer build is a little more finicky. I do think um, this build is easier to gear up for 
and grab uh, gear and be able to jump in and do some immediate damage. So we're going to continue fine tuning this spec. I really like this one. Like I said, I'm going to switch over to do like a melee type of thing. So I really like it, but I want to see how far we can push it. Where can we make improvements? Uh, getting into the endless arena, for instance, and seeing how many waves up we can go. You know, I, uh, I went to 55 with my archer before I got bored, but I really, I think, want to try to push both of them. See how far we can go before things go south and we start to, uh, we start to die and um, things get a little more difficult. You know, Wilson talks about their AI, um, Kathira, I think it's AI. So I'm curious to see if that's in the game yet, and if it is, what kind of, what kind of uh, things it's going to start throwing my way. So before we get out of here, though, I do want to show you guys the staff. Um, something that Wilson does really well is just the basic kind of staff attacks. Um, I'm really digging them. Man, this thing is like ridiculous. Let me go all the way back down here. I really dig them. I think they're really great. And um, they give a little more flair to the game. So we do have technical beta 2 coming out uh, next week. That next week is going to be the 26th of uh, November 2018, for those of you who are watching in the future. And I'm really excited for what we got. I think it's going to be decent. Um, we're going to see some new uniques. We're going to see some new skills. We're going to see some new... Um, I think new bosses even too, if I remember correctly, and really just kind of an all around new experience. So really sign me up and I think we're going to, uh, now they, they didn't say any new passive skills either. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, 122. Nice. But that's nothing for me. Um, they did say we're going to be, uh, not getting any new passive trees yet. Uh, they're still working on those, but honestly it's perfectly fine and I think we'll be we'll be okay but anyway guys I am out of here so let's get a conversation rolling downstairs I'm really curious to see what you guys think of the storm mage build um, and as always uh, feel free to you know correct me give me some advice give me some feedback if there's something I'm missing if there's something that you know I don't know about absolutely give me that uh, constructive criticism because I'm a gamer too. I'm looking to improve my build any way I can. You know, push deeper into Endless Arena, push deeper into those leaderboards. So, absolutely. I know some of you uh, were super stoked um, that, you know, hey, I got this really good build. It's going to be phenomenal. You know, it's something a little bit different type of deal. And I think, uh, I think it's going to be really good. So, uh, leave me a comment on, you know, what build you guys are using. What build are you guys using to push deep into endless if you guys aren't playing do you guys have any uh, questions on the builds that we do have around mages around uh, warriors around physical builds around archer builds I'm taking any and all requests because um, I've kind of hit a certain point where I've tried a lot of different things but maybe haven't really you know committed to anything 100% yet or uh, maybe there's something that I'm missing so anyway, guys, this has been Vulcan, and until next time, see you later.